Alright, so this should be a quick video for UX resume writing. Well, mostly rewriting. 10 do's for your UX resume. The goal for this video is to give you some tips to create simpler, more relevant, and cleaner resume content. These are more like revision tips to improve your resume. So it's very simple, very straightforward. You don't have to add any content. Just focus on the content you already have. Yes, content is king. So make sure to put that crown onto your resume. Let's begin. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. And today, we're gonna to focus on the content on your resume. Reconstructing, rewriting, rephrasing your existing content. If you're looking for new content or what content to put on your resume, this is the video for you. Go check that out. By transforming your existing content, making it better, more relevant, easy to read for recruiters and hiring managers, it would then increase your chance of getting an interview. Of course, don't forget to smash the like button down below and watch to the end for the bonus content. Speaking of watching, to me, the best way to enjoy a video is always to have something to sip on, right? So grab your favorite drink and let's dive in. Content is king for resumes, right? But why? The definition of a resume is actually very simple. It shows what you did in the past and the impact of what you did. Show a good UX design resume shows what UX projects that you did and the impact that those projects help create and contribute. Everything else is just extensions, dressing. Think about it this way. Technically, you can completely leave out your name and your contact info. If your content is so absolutely amazing, so amazing that the recruiter will hunt you down, and at that point, you will have nowhere to hide, even though you have no contact info or whatsoever on your resume. They will find you, they will track you down because you have such impressive experiences in the past. They need you and they will beg to hire you. I can still hear you. Did you not see the sign? No one lives here. Please, please, just, just hear me out, hear me out, okay? Um, we have got your resume here. I know you didn't put your name or contact info on there, but thank Google, we're able to locate you. Awesome, and you have such amazing and impressive experiences and, and UX design, and we can really use your talent. So we, we're really looking forward to schedule an interview or a call or just chat with you, and we can talk about anything, potential offer. Fine. Fine, we can talk. Amazing, right? I know, that's your goal. Therefore, make sure your resume shows what you did and the impact of what you did. Of course, your resume still have to live up to that six second standard. And here are the 10 do's for you. Do use too much room. Make sure your content has enough room to breathe. You really don't want to have so little space that it feels cramping and crowded. Remember, your content is always claustrophobic. So always give it more room than you think. Give it at least 20% room, meaning at least 20% of your resume should be wide space, just wide space, including the margin and space within your content. Do keep it on one page. Well, using more wide space doesn't mean your content is gonna flow to the next page, always. Keep your resume on one page, one and one page only. If it's more than one page, it's no longer concise. The recruiter won't be able to read everything in six seconds or get the most important things in six seconds because there's so much to look at. Do use numbers. Numbers are different from words. They're universal language that your brain will interpret them differently. Number five is different from F-I-V-E five. In a book, you will probably read 5 million users. I would say it's mostly for the formality reason. If you turn it into numbers, 5 million users. How do you feel? Is it easier to see the scale and the implication of it? It's cleaner too, because all zeros look the same. And they are simpler too, way simpler than all the letters, the different letters in the word million. If you made 10 prototypes in a project, for example, then I would say it's better to put created 10 framework prototypes for user testing versus just saying created 10 framework prototypes for user testing or just say prototype design concept with framework no numbers even it's cleaner but still gives more specificity to the bullet point without adding a lot of stuff 
do show impact. Start with internships or freelance jobs. These are professional projects, professional experiences, and therefore there must be a goal for these projects. Let's take my internship at Pinterest for example. I was on a search team and I worked on a feature that uses animation to encourage users to search more. Yes, I designed and created the specs for the animation, that's the deliverables. Then what? I designed those animations not just for the sake of designing them. What's the goal for those animations? To encourage more users to search. Then I need to find out how many more users search because of my animation. The metric can vary depending on your project or the company. I can use the actual number of users. Say my animation increased 10,000 users to search after its implementation. Or I can use a metric that is more relative, say a percentage. Pinterest itself actually does have a metric to track these um, searches on a team, which they call it DAS, Daily Active Searchers. And my animation, I found out, ended up increased 2% of that metric, which is pretty good. So I include that number in my resume as the impact of this particular feature, this particular project for my internship. Don't underestimate this small number, this 2%. This can insanely help convince your potential recruiters or hiring manager how much your design expertise can contribute to their company. And that's where your value is. That's why the companies want to hire me. They want my design skills to help bring value to the company. Make sense? Showing numbers on your resume can really help make the case why they should hire you. Everyone can make an animation. But each animation can create different value. How do you showcase your animations could create some value or more value than other animations that everybody else's or other designers created? You show numbers. You show the impact of your animation. How well you can craft or choreograph an animation is one thing. How much value that can bring to the company is another. And that is the bigger thing to most of the companies. So go find out what the goal of your projects are and find numbers to back them up. You can find numbers through user testing. Maybe your 10th iteration, the user satisfaction rate is increased by 5%. There you go, you have 5% to have in your resume. That's why showing numbers is powerful. And numbers are a great way to show impact. Do use phrases not paragraphs. I completely agree, dense paragraphs can totally create better and more engaging stories. That's why books are so long, right? Duh. But your resume is not a book. Oh, I didn't think of that. So you're not going to follow the book writing standard. Use phrases in bullet point style and get to the point. And that's it. The recruiters are only spending six seconds looking for your point. Phrases can get to the point faster. So that's better. Paragraphs, on the other hand, bury those points. So you will lose points in your application. Do start with verbs. A resume is to showcase what you did. So you say, I designed a mobile app. No, because you use phrases in bullet points. So you go right to design mobile app that does A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's why you're able to get to the point faster because you skipped a lot of words and a verb describes an action, right? An action is what you did. What you did is the essential part of your resume. Do use active words. Active phrasing is better than passive phrasing. Different words have different connotations that will subconsciously influence or affect how a reader perceives a message. You want to be a motivated, self-starter, autonomous designer, or a lazy, hand me the work and I will do it for you designer. Luckily, most verbs are active, like designed, created, built. And then if you have a bullet point that starts with received, it breaks the consistency in your resume. So try to find another word to rephrase your bullet points for that. For example, instead of saying receive feedback, you can say you gather feedback or you collected feedback. This is a minor detail, but hey, designers are detail oriented, right? It's part of you, it's your second nature, so don't forget that. Do test your design. Again, design thinking. Say you design a resume V2, great, an iteration, but how do you know if it's working? Well, you test it, right? You open it in your browser. See if it's legible. 
See if you can see all the text. If you need to zoom in, red flag. If it looks okay for you, grab your friends, your parents, your teachers, even some real recruiters from LinkedIn. Ask them to see if they have any problem reading it so you can collect some feedback and iterate on your V3, V5, V10, V20. You can also print it out, especially if you expect you will go to an in-person career fair anytime soon, then you should definitely test it in print. At least I would say in 2021, we will probably mostly very likely to be remote. That's why I recommended testing it on the browser because that's the main way recruiters and hiring managers will be seeing your resume. Do list the latest experience first. If you don't already know, your resume will start with the most current info to the oldest. I used to think it's so counterintuitive to write a resume in a reverse chronological order. But then later I get to learn about how resumes well, I mean, how recruiters read resumes, that changed my mind. When you attach your resume to a job application, the recruiter will actually first check your current job against the job post. If you are a UX designer now, and you apply to a UX design job, okay, match, proceed. But if you're a motion designer right now, and you apply to a UX designer job, hmm, there's some discrepancy, even though they're both in the same design family dig deeper, meaning they need to spend more time on the application. Not a red flag, it's just not as smooth as it could be. Also think about it this way. One recruiter, let's say me, receives two applications for the same UX designer role. One applicant is a UX designer and another one is a motion designer. Who do you think I would see first? Of course, this one. This explains why you want to get promoted from a UX designer to a design manager within your company before you apply elsewhere for a design manager job. Because in that case, your title, your current title will actually match the job post, right? Remember, design thinking. You iterate to achieve a goal. In this case, is getting an offer. Your goal here is not to look chronologically correct for the resume. If putting your latest experience first and doing your resume in a reverse chronological order is the way to get an offer, then that's the way to do it. Very last one, an important one as well. Do spell and grammar check. This literally takes less than 30 seconds to do, so please do it. It sounds like a tedious task, it's not at all. And you don't even need to pay for any of the Grammarly or other paid services. Let me just give you a demo. You go to Gmail, copy your resume, paste it in there, anything in red needs your attention. And that's it. I know it's not your intention to have typos, but I think it is your intention to ensure the professionalism and the readability of your resume. So do it. Spell check and grammar check. All right, so these are the 10 do's for your next UX design resume iteration and the baseline is still the same. Make sure to include what you did, and the impact of what you did while making sure it's easy to read and parse under six seconds. Change anything if needed, but do keep your old resumes. Once you finish your V2, put it next to your V1 side by side and take a look at them, see what you think. You might be amazed how much simpler, cleaner, more easy to read, even with almost the exact same information. Speaking of amazed, I need to give some shout out to some amazing audience that helped support the channel. All right, let's see. First up, thank you, Stella Buckman. Glad to hear you enjoyed the video. Hope this will also help your architect resume. Thank you, Ashtag. Hope my feedback for your resume is useful. Thank you, Salik Aslam. Let me know in the comment section down below if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thank you, Ann Furukawa. I think I'm saying that right, right? Thank you, love, C. Looking forward to your next video. Thank you again for the support, Emily Lin. I hope my feedback for your resume has been helpful. I'm glad that you're taking the opportunity to send me the second round for the second iteration. Keep going, keep iterating. Good spirit. Thank you again, Bianca Iona Costin. Great, thanks for correcting me. Now I got your name. And lastly, thanks again, made by Mira. Hope you're doing well in Georgia Tech and keep the UX in Georgia Tech going. Let's do it. Hope you all enjoyed the bonus content on the last video and hope my feedback was useful for your next resume iteration. And speaking of bonus content, 
Here's another one for you. Shh, don't tell anyone. I'm more than happy to look over your resume and give you some feedback. All you have to do is, one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send me your resume to my email, which you can find on my about page. Make sure to include your YouTube username so that I know you have left that comment and I will give you a shout out in my next video. Good luck to you all on your next UX resume iteration and future internships. With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX videos like this, also consider smash that subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!